So as all of you know by now, we've been working on a lot of the electrical. And now I'm about to replace the Tesla battery pack PC boards with some Stealth EV cards. This will allow us to connect our battery management system, which is super important with lithium ion batteries. And especially since we're repurposing Tesla batteries, it just becomes like extra important. Um, these batteries are super, super dense um, compared to anything else you can find in, on the market. And so we wanna be super cautious about the charge and discharge. And we really wanna make sure that they're managed well. So we're replacing these cards so that we can hook up our BMS and uh, continue our electrical adventures. Now that I got all this plastic off, I can finally start trying to fold the cell tap board over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I like super delicate as well, because uh, you don't want to put undue pressure on the board and damage the wiring. And if you plan on reusing the cell tap board, I would go with like something plastic to finagle them out. But I'm not, so I'm a screwdriver is fine. One board done. So, I put the four little pins back in. And, uh, pop this protective cover back on. Flip it in. Put it back down. And done. That's how you place the cell tap board in a uh, battery. Okay, so we are about ready to physically put in the Victron, but before we do that, we have to take off the faceplate so we can get to all the wiring and stuff to install it. Okay, there we go. Off comes its face. Ah, look at all the mechanical stuff. You know, if you pull apart an old computer, it's not even that complex looking. This is a lot more complex than that. Okay, so that is now installed. And the reason we went specifically with that um, model is because our system is going to be 48 volt. And it is a charger and inverter. So we'll be able to charge the batteries on shore power as well as have the inverter so that we can use the AC power converted to DC power, which will definitely be useful, especially for some of the AC kind of instruments on the boat, um, specifically the plugs. So that was the best place we could find to put it that was kind of um, out of the way, but also easily accessible. And if you watch Sailing Uma, um, it is the same one they have, or at least had. I don't know if they've changed it since then. That's where we got the idea to look into Victron specifically. Now to install other things before we start wiring. We have brought in the Calvary today because we're going to get launched as quick as possible. The last thing to do before that is electrical. We've got the electrical where the nav desk is at right here. Um, and we want to extend it to the top um, so we have more room to insert things like this. Just insert additional stuff because this one's completely full and we're putting in new stuff. So 
Mick's dad is here to help us build stuff. He's a little bit better with the construction-y type stuff than we are. So, let's go watch. Okay, two days later, and after some small annoying hiccups, which were not filmed due to their annoyance and just things that, like a bolt breaking and things like that, which just delayed us, we are now finally officially going to start wiring stuff. That was my thing, girl, by the way. Like, okay. Let's get to it! The rest of this video. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Get the oh. No. <laughs> uh, I'm just pulling up the wiring instructions now. You'd think I'd have memorized it, but I haven't. Okay, that's up oh. recording. What? Three wires go to their respective terminals on the charge controller. Goes to M1. I really wish I had that staple button. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. We have it at home. No, we do not have it. That that was easy button at home. That's a bucket button. You push it, and there's a bunch of different variations of it saying bucket. Things like that. A lot of bleeping. A lot of bleeping. Our wired. Yeah, we are. Ooh. So Uh, this is this is the main wiring harness for the motor controller. What's the motor controller do? The motor controller controls the motor. It also gives you readouts and regulates the voltage and like whole other whole bunch of other things that I can't really go into right now because I barely remember it all. I need to find a place to move that contact jerk coil. Which is this guy right here. Okay, well, it's currently he's currently here. But this cord, which Nick is holding his hand, if you would give us an example, I can't see that I'm over here, doesn't reach. So it goes to this yeah. thingy and then to over there in the middle. Like, and then no further. And then there. But it doesn't reach. So we need to move it. I know this is like half of our struggle is we keep finding places for stuff. And then we keep having to move it because it doesn't quite work. Because Where the we cord's just too short or something to that effect. And quite frankly, because this boat was built with an engine in it. It was not built for things like this. So we have to be a bit clever with it. Good thing I'm smart. And Nick is smart. And we are smart as a duo. Which means we get stuff done. You dig. A few days ago, I bought a bunch of this, and this is one by two, rounded up oak. Super hardy in marine environments, and probably way more expensive, and way too good of a wood for what I'm about to use it for. So, don't judge me. 
But we're on time constraints, and I am so sick of fucking around and going to Home Depot. This episode's gonna have so much bleeping. <laughs> Anyways, so what I'm gonna do is move the contactor coil right here. So this piece of wood needs to get mounted to the sidewall, and then the contactor coil is gonna get mounted here, as well as the fuse that will keep things nice and nice. We couldn't put the drill in between the motor controller and the contactor coil um, for the wood to pre-drill the holes, so we had to undo everything we just did and remove the wood so that we can attach the contactor coil first. Okay, so this connects the motor. That's connected. And then, last but not least, contactor coil connection. White goes to A1. Well, we finished wiring the bulk of the motor to the motor controller. Uh, what we still have left to do is running the negative terminals to our main negative bus, as well as wiring the main positive cables into the controller. Anyways, so right now I'm right now I'm cutting into this the old top shelf. This entire area over here is going to be extended to create our new electrical panel. Um, but I'm creating this new top shelf, and today I'm using hand tools because the uh, jigsaw is not available. So I've already cut one little notch, and I'm about to cut a big old notch to allow all the wires to feed through. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and mount these uh, these two buses. I don't want to write this song Potato chips and coffee Their lives never stop me Global woman open door Learning to negotiate Buying up some real I think I have enough openings for all the cable that we'll need to run into here. So with that, let's um, secure these down. Okay, so now that these are secure, I'm gonna start running all my lines. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and come back next week as we finish installing our batteries. I want to give a huge shout out to our newest patron, David Page. Thank you so much for joining us. See you all next week.